Well, hello all you beautiful souls. Here we are again. Uh, today I want to talk to you about my flagship policy. <laughs> Makes me sound like a politician. Last thing I ever want to be is a politician. Um, I wouldn't mind advising a few. There's quite a few that need advice. The thing I'm best known for is my ideas about money. Uh, you ask who's that Jack Cox bloke, they'll say, well, he's the one who wants to get rid of the money. Yeah, well, basically I do. What is it good for anyway? It's just a way of keeping a score. I've got more than you, I'm more successful than you. No, you're not, you've just got more money than me. You just meaner than me, or you'd be sharing it. People are going on a lot. I've seen a lot on social media and have a, quite a few discussions on social media. Uh, people having a go at capitalism. No, capitalism isn't perfect. Of course, it isn't. But at the end of the day, it's just the laissez-faire economic system. Which means that um, the people who make the most money doing what they're doing, carry on what they're doing. And the people who aren't making any money doing what they're doing have to find something else to do. And the alternative to that, the one that most of these people who are attacking capitalism want, is communism. They want a heavy-handed government telling them what they can produce and what they can't produce. And if any of you have read Animal Farm by George Orwell, you will know why that system doesn't work. Starts off all happy bunny rabbits. We're doing this for you. We're saving you from the oppressor. And very quickly the government become the oppressor. And the people eventually realise they've just exchanged one oppressor for another. But what if there was a third way? A third possibility they hadn't even thought about? And that's the one that I propose. The one I talk about in my book. My Love Not Fear book. The third possibility is a free gift economy. Just carry on doing what you're doing, just ditch the money, take the money out of the equation. You go into a shop, you go into Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Walmart, I don't bet you know. Um, and you see a bunch of bananas and it's marked up at one ninety nine dollars euros pounds doesn't make much difference um oh, what's that sign actually saying well most people think what's he on about that sign says that um the bananas cost one ninety nine but if you look a little bit deeper, you'll realise that sign is saying, I will only give you these bananas if you give me one ninety nine. I don't care if you're starving. I don't care if you haven't eaten for a week. You're not getting these bananas unless you give me one ninety nine. Is that really the way we want to live? Is it really?
What have you run a, a grocery shop? And somebody come in for a bunch of bananas and you just said, look, help yourself. That's the bananas over there. Oh, great, thanks, the guy says. And he takes the bananas and he goes home and he eats the bananas. And the next day he goes to work and he makes whatever it is he makes, widgets. And he gives them away to people who want widgets. And somebody takes one of his widgets and goes to say, say thanks for the widget. And he goes home and he uses the widget for whatever he uses widgets for. And uh, the next day he goes to work and... Um, Maybe he's a potter, he makes mugs. And after he's made his mugs and they come out the kiln and they've been painted, he gives them away. And one of the guys who takes one of the mugs is the guy that gave the other guy the bananas. What goes around comes around, you know? It's a very simple system. If nobody cares about winning or losing, nobody cares that somebody's got more than them, or if they do care, and I suggest we do care, um, it's not, I've got more than him, I'm winning, it's, I've got more than him, I've got to help him. And people say, but, you know, that sounds so much like the Communist Manifesto. Each according to his means, each according to his need, or whatever it was. Um, and yeah, that's beautiful. Let's, let's live by that. Doesn't mean we have to become communists just because they thought of the words first. The difference between my system and communism is that in communism, the government runs it. And according to my system, there is no government and we run it for ourselves. We just get on and do it. So if you're not going to get paid, well, why would you go to work? I hate, I hate my job. I only go because I've got to feed the wife and kids. Well, we've got to change that. Maybe you go to work because you get respect, status in society. He's a hard worker. She produces lots of beautiful mugs. He's a great doctor. She's a great dentist. They get respect for doing that. And also because they know that by playing their part, they make the system work. And if they don't go and do their part, then the system will collapse and we'll be go back to money and they'll remember how bad money was. How mean money made people. And meanness, of course, is just a manifestation of fear. Hence the title of my book, Love Not Fear. There's so many ways that we live by fear. And fear of poverty and hunger. It's one of those fears. Fears that maybe one day we won't drive our nice BMW anymore and we won't live in our nice detached house, in a nice leafy suburb. And maybe we'll end up sleeping in a shop doorway. Wouldn't it be nice if nobody ever had to worry about sleeping in a shop doorway?
if we all knew that everybody else would take care of us and that we all have bad days and good days good months and bad months good years and bad years if you're having a bad year and somebody else is having a good year they'll help you out because that's the way society will become if we adopt this new system it's nothing to do with communism or to put it a different way it takes the best ideas the best parts of communism and the best and leaves the worst parts of communism behind because there's no government involved if we just stop focusing on what people take out we stop respecting people for what they take out oh he's got a big car he must be respectable huh? I've got nothing against wealth. Please don't mistake money and wealth. They're two totally different things. Under my system, we can all have far more wealth than we could ever have dreamt of. Money is just a means of exchange and a very inefficient means of exchange of wealth. But what if we don't have to keep track of how much wealth we exchange we just stop counting it's really that simple to stop counting stop keeping score I don't want to get too much into conspiracy theories but you look around the world you've got to realize that there's something going on that's excuse me more than we've been taught at school and at university there's more going on than we've been told you'd have to be blind not to see it there's a an Eddie Cohen song that I rather like which is called Anthem and the bit I like goes something like this, and don't worry, I'm not going to sing it. And Cohen doesn't sing anyway. Um, there's a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. That's how the light gets in. And in this illuminating year of 2020 where it's really starting to see the cracks the cracks in the official narrative government policy around this COVID-19 fiasco the inconsistencies that's a good place to start just look at all the inconsistencies you know, during the lockdown, we couldn't sit alone on a beach, but we could go into a crowded supermarket. What the fuck? You've got to just look at the way that panned out, and, and there are so many cracks in it that the light floods through. You've got to be blind not to see. And you can look at other things, I mean, all the evidence about the 9-11 attack in America. Um, yeah, there may well have been planes involved, but that's not the whole story. Plenty of fire reports that have said that the planes couldn't possibly have brought down those towers on their own. And then there's the story which 
It's hard to verify these things, but I, I think it's probably true that um, Bin Laden was a CIA agent at one time. And there's growing evidence the CIA were behind the J.F. Kennedy assassination. And then you look at the timing of this COVID-19. I mean, why now? Well, why the hysteria? Never mind why now. Now is the answer, which I'm going to come to. The question is, why all the hysteria about a, a virus that's no more deadly than a swine flu was? No more deadly than seasonal flu, or not much more deadly. Half as deadly as car accidents, road accidents. Something like 20 times less deadly than heart disease. So what are the hysteria? And as I say, the timing is the answer. It's election year in, the, in America. And the vested interest has been trying to take down Trump since the day he was, um, he was elected. Now I don't support Trump or any other politician or any political party. I, want, I would like to see the end of all of them. But um, I've never seen anybody attacked the way Trump has been attacked by the media. Even here in Britain, the BBC, wall-to-wall -wall, anti trump propaganda. Blatant lies, most of it. And any time he does anything, they've got to put a negative spin on it. The establishment are desperate to take down Trump. Now, I don't necessarily buy into all this QAnon stuff. Um, I don't buy into politicians and their rhetoric at all. But you've got to realise that the vested interests, the liars, the ones rep the so-called progressives. Well, I mentioned that the other day, didn't I, about progressives. Why, uh, why are the left wing called progressive and the right wing are called populist? When in a democracy, by definition, a democracy progresses in the most popular direction. It's all Orwellian newspeak where everything is backwards. So why do these people want to take down Trump? Well, not just because he's right wing and they're left wing. It goes a lot deeper than that. He wants to drain the swamp, the, the swamp, and he is draining the swamp. And a lot of them are going under. And now we've got the sex trafficking and child sex trafficking scandal that's come up with Epstein. And now they've got. Um, Robert Maxwell's daughter. And if she doesn't commit suicide in prison, she's going to sing like a canary. And I hear that um, Tom Hanks has fled to Greece. It's huge. And the Vatican's involved. It's huge. So what's all that got to do with money? Well, only as much as the people that run the system. The corrupt system. The ones I call in my book, I call the globalist elite. 
yeah, there's top banking politicians in there and top banking clergymen, probably royals. But at the heart of it all are the banksters, the Morgans and the Rothschilds. And what's the best way to bring down the banksters? Collapse the banks. Start by refusing to accept credit because that's a huge con. They lend you money they don't really have. They'll make you work to pay it back. And when you can't, they seize your real assets, your house, and you can't. It's a con. It's a trick. And it's made them very, very wealthy. So stop buying into that. When I was a boy, we used to save up for what we wanted. I remember I was driving in the car with my dad. Um, I, th I was probably still at school, maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, but I was still living at home with mum and dad. And dad was going to the bank. No, he wasn't. But anyway, we were in the car, he got this letter, and he was opening this letter, and it was a credit card. And the bank... Nat West, I think it was, was saying, all the banks were doing it, were sending these credit cards out to all their customers that were in good standing. You didn't have to apply for one. They were just sent out. And my dad was an accountant, and he, he, and he could see through this straight away. And he just tore the thing up, but, you know, ripped it in half, cut it in half. Um, yeah, that's why we were going to the bank, because uh, he was going to tell the bank what he thought of them. <laughs> That was my dad, a brilliant guy. I miss my dad. Um, yeah. Um, but now, two or three generations on, kids are being brought up to think that it's normal. You buy on tick. What we used to call a higher purchase. Now it's called rent to own, I think. Stupid expression they use. Or you do it on your credit card. Oh, well, I've got a couple of credit cards. But I pay them off every month in full. Bugger if I'm paying their interest rates. It's just useful for internet shopping. So we take down the banks, firstly by refusing credit, and then we move to stage two where we stop using money. The banks collapse. The banksters become ordinary individuals like you and me. The politicians that are bought by the banksters, that are owned by the banksters, they collapse. And all the cash for questions stop. All the lobbying stops, all the corrupt lobbying. And we, my good friends, we take back control of our country and our world. Sounds like a plan? Let's make it happen. Namaste.